Hello pandas. I like copper wire. Do you like copper wire? I like copper wire. Copper's a great price right now. And let's say you have a bin of it. Maybe several. Separated by grades. You want to get the best price for it and you aren't opposed to stripping. But is it worth it to strip wire for scrap? Which ones to strip? Which ones to skip? And are you actually losing money by removing all of that weight from the insulation? I've got a whole selection of examples here and we're gonna find out right now. First, let's get on the same page. I don't have a stripping machine. Lots of people don't. If you can afford to get a tabletop stripper, then I encourage you to do so. Life is always better with a stripper. Like and subscribe. Point is, everybody has a method that works best for them. I'm not gonna tell you the best way because it might not be the best for you. I'm gonna keep it simple today by warming up the wire and then stripping it by hand with a blade. For that reason, we're not going to be directly comparing earnings per hour, but instead focus on the recovery percentage. After we've compared those, we'll know which types give the best return for the time spent. But first, we need to understand the pricing. Simply put, your scrapyard sets the price of wire based on the percentage of copper that can be recovered from it. This could vary by location, but at my yard, insulated copper wire number one is 70%. That means 70% of the total weight of the material will be pure copper. Number two is 50, number three is 30, and Christmas lights are number four because they're typically between 15 and 20% copper by weight. Cat five is 45%, so if your yard wants it separated, it's probably because they pay less than number two insulated, and Romex or Lumex, which are technically just brand names for the same thing, which is NM wire, those are between 50 and 60%. So they're actually between number one and number two. Separating those is a good idea. It doesn't matter if it's the paper or the plastic, they, they're still considered the same thing. The price they pay will scale with the price of copper. So bare versus insulated prices will always follow each other with a bit of a labor fee subtracted, of course. Insulated number two, 50% will not get you 50% of the price of Bare Bright. Otherwise, stripping would never be worth it. What I found interesting about this is the solid core versus the fine strand insulated wire. See, this super fine angel hair kind of stuff will actually lose a bunch of its weight when melted. So this is a lower grade than this. This is not number one, no matter how thick it is. You'll probably get Lumex price for it because it's clearly better than number two, but it's not as good as you might think. That also means that once it's stripped, the copper in this will be clean number two wire, which is worth less than this one, which would be clean number one. The differences are pretty easy to tell, but if you're not sure if it stays in position when you bend it, that's the difference. Number one, number two. Another interesting point about Lumex or Romex, if you strip off just the outer insulation, you upgrade it to three strands of number one insulated copper wire and one strand of number one clean copper. Now, with that out of the way, let's run through these and see where the best returns are. Now we'll start with the number one, then we'll move on to some of this heavier stuff, then do a bunch of Lumex. Hello, we're back. I spent as long as it took, stripped all those different kinds of wire, and did the math. I'll share my chicken scratch with anybody who's interested, uh, but I didn't make it especially easy to read. I did inflate the percentages to a hypothetical 100 pounds of wire just to make it easy on myself. And yes, I did do the percentage increase backwards the first time, but I fixed it. There were a few interesting discoveries though, so allow me to interpret for you. Starting with the number one wire. What stood out to me the most is that on average, this stuff actually contained 80% copper rather than the 70% like the scrapyards claimed. The only stuff that was 70% was the inner strands from Lumex wire. Although to be fair, that is probably a large portion of what they get in this category. On average, stripping copper number one wire increases your payout by 40%, but the smaller it is, the smaller the return for your time. If you've got a ton of these thin ones, I really wouldn't suggest stripping them by hand. This fire resistant jacket type brings the average down because its insulation is especially dense. It was also the most difficult to clean because the plastic kind of buries itself into the strands, which sucks because it's some of the better weight. 30% increase when cleaned. This stuff was my next surprise. 
I was a little worried because of the fibrous copper on the inside being a lower grade, like we discussed, but the jacket is soft and easy to remove, and doing so increases the final value by a whopping 76%. Unless it's a really tiny bit, don't let this stuff go to the yard wearing a jacket. An experienced stripper knows this is what money looks like. Moving on to Lumex, I spent some time in this category because there are several different ways you could go about it. Either you could just go topless and have several strands of insulated number one and the ground wire as bare bright, or you could go the distance and take it all off. The full Monty. I compared both and what I learned was you'll increase your payout 35% just by taking off a layer. Going all the way typically only brings it up a little over another 15%. However, we are talking averages. It goes without saying that some have a little more going on underneath, and it makes a difference. Take this one, or this one for example. Beautifully round, thick, and full. Even with a diminutive ground wire, this one's bringing the average up, almost 40% increase just by removing the top layer. Keep going, and you'll reveal a jaw-dropping 80% greater return. Yeah, it takes a little more time, but sometimes that's the difference between good and excellent. Simplified. Bigger is better, obviously. Three strand is better than two strand, and round is better than flat. Better meaning more worth the time to strip. With a little overlap in that this thick two strand flat one pays better than this two strand round one. The other thing I found is with the vintage paper insulated wire. I was surprised to learn that all of that paper and string weighs pretty much the same as the modern plastic equivalent. The insides are different though, the ground is thinner and the other wires are thicker, so it's less worth doing halfway and basically the same, completely cleaned. Just for fun, I did a couple strands of number two wire. I picked what I thought would be the better stuff, just this basic small appliance power cord style. The numbers surprised me. Two of the pieces were below 50% copper, which makes me think most number two wire probably is. But one piece, which did look a little different, more like a fibrous inner strands of some kind of Lumex or whatnot was 72%, which when compared to the $1.50 per pound I get for number two wire, came to a staggering 97% increase. Now I will definitely recognize that stuff if I see it again, but regardless, I don't think anybody should be stripping number two wire. It's time consuming, fiddly, and the weight is pointless. If it takes you 10 minutes to double the dime, you probably shouldn't spend all afternoon doing it. So what do we think? Well, don't even talk about stripping Cat5 or number 2. If it's too small to go through an automatic stripping machine, then you definitely shouldn't do it by hand. The rest of it is personal, and I apologize if that sounds lazy, but it's true. I don't think it matters how good you are. You'd be hard pressed to make a decent hourly wage stripping wire by hand. It goes faster if it's in long pieces and it's warm and it's straight, but for the most part, it's not going to be amazing stuff like these. It's going to be a laundry basket full of Lumex that's worth $60, and you can make it worth an extra $25 if you've got nothing better to do. Keep in mind that's with copper at $4 a pound today. My suggestions? Definitely strip anything as exciting as this and most number one wire because those percentages are just working harder with weight like that. Regular Lumex will be more emotional. Don't touch the skinny stuff unless there's a whole spool of it. The medium ones, just take the top layer off and decide then if it's worth more time. As far as a tabletop stripper, well, if you can afford one, get one. There's literally no downside. But consider this. That laundry bin full of Lumex I showed was 20 pounds. Properly packed right full, it could be 50 pounds. That's $85, and you can add $40 by stripping it. So, six and a half laundry baskets of wire pays for your stripper. A cheap one, not a good one. So your volume decides if you can afford it. That's almost everything you need to know about stripping. The metal wrapped BX cable is easy to pull the wires out of sometimes, so it's worth it, but not if it takes all day. And yes, I know the cheap strippers have trouble doing Lumex cable, it was just an example. And I don't know a thing about that crazy layered stuff. Looks like a lot of effort for a disappointing payoff to me. Share this video with the stripping enthusiast in your life. I'm looking forward to the comments on this one. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.